Seriously, this is about as low as you want your gas gauge to get in the winter time. Now why is that? Well there's a couple of reasons. One is when you have gas in your tank and it's totally full there's no air left over. When you have this much air it also has a certain amount of humidity or moisture in it and that can wreak havoc with freezing things up in your fuel system or also just all the crud. Now in this state they used to do a stupid thing that's called oxygenated gas. Oxygenated gas was like OxyClean, you know, that guy with the black beard. Beards are awesome, you know, don't get me wrong. There was that famous guy, and uh, he'd do all these commercials for OxyClean, how to clean everything. Well, that oxygenated gas did the same thing. You think that's great, except you realize that it holds all of the stuff. It cleans the suspension, and uh, all that crud gets into your fuel system, sits in the bottom of your tank, and when, that, when it gets down to the bottom slim pickings of the tank, it sucks up all the crud into your fuel pump, and then that can cause your car to break down, and then you're walking home, and it's not going to be fireflies and moonlight and warm breezes. It's going to be snowflakes and cold wind and hypothermia. So you want to make sure that you have your tank at least half a tank. There's a product that you can use to help... Uh, get the water out of your tank from all that air and uh, water vapor that winds up forming in there. Also it's good to have more gas into your tank you know even if it's not winter because that fuel is used to keep your fuel pump cool and help it to last a long time. So here's that product I'm talking about it's an iso heat it's a type of a isopropyl alcohol whatever it is it's got injector cleaner yada yada water remover in the fine print that's what we're looking for so if you get a bunch of uh, water in your fuel and sometimes that just happens you know sometimes when they're moving fuel from one tank to another tank or maybe stuff you know like uh, because of the heavy air and it's cold and water bearing it gets into the ground tank at the gas station before getting in the pump and getting into your tank so water in your fuel system that's just bad uh, especially carbureted stuff is really bad but uh, here's something that you can do. <laughs> this is the important part of the video. It's important to have at least a half a tank of gas because, let me tell you a story. So my buddy Zell and I, we decide we're going to go skiing because this big storm came through, tons of snow, and so we're headed up to the ski resort. We're in my little white Jeep uh, Cherokee and that thing was just awesome in the snow. It was just, you know, his Jeep's name was Trixie. She loved uh, dancing in the mud, dancing in the snow, off-roading, you know. It's just like that Grateful Dead song, just like a wheelies and four-wheel drive, you know. So basically, we're going up to the ski resort, and we're excited. We're just totally stoked. And uh, on our way up to the ski resort, you have to have four-wheel drive and snow tires to even go in the canyon, or snow chains, you know, one of the other chains of four-wheel drive. So there's this couple, bless their hearts, this retired old couple from England, and uh, it's like watching an Austin Powers movie. I mean, their teeth were just all over the place, bless their hearts, you know. But they're up there in a rental car, it's only two-wheel drive, doesn't have snow tires, doesn't have nothing. Shouldn't even be up there. So they're just tobogganing down the road. So we get T-boned by, by them, that means they hit me sideways like this. So we just get destroyed. Um, <laughs> You know, Zell's freaking awesome. He's a great person to go skiing with because he's like, you know what, we're going to laugh about this later and it's just going to be awesome. And we just had a freaking riot. It was just a lot of fun anyway. My door smashed in. Um, my seat's kind of buckled up. You know, it's a good thing that I have narrow hips because <laughs> that door and the console were just, you know, it was like a bucket seat. So my door is bent this way and so it's not closing anymore so I got this air gap big storm all this snow all this kind of stuff and we're going up the canyon right so we're gonna go still go ski and I don't care they just totaled my Jeep I got their insurance information we exchanged we tried to call the local sheriffs have them come up and do a accident report but guess what sheriffs can't make it up the canyon because there's a tour bus going down jackknifed blocked off the whole canyon so we're going up we're just going to go ski and forget it you know cut our losses we're just going to go up well guess what a bus at the top of the canyon <laughs> jackknife you can't jackknife unless you have a trailer right well with a bus you can just do whatever you want you know they're huge <laughs> block the whole road 
you know, normally you hear about diesel trucks, Jack. Now, I don't know why I even say that. They do, they're blocking the whole road because they're against the canyon wall here and they're against the snow bank and the drop off and the cliff on the other side. So, mountain road cutting the side of the mountain. You got cliff, <laughs> straight, cliff, bus. Okay, it's blocking the whole thing. I don't care what kind of Jeep you got or you think you got, you're not getting around the bus here or at the bottom. So, my vehicle doesn't close anymore. Because the front and the back doors, you know, here and here, are wide open. <laughs> Snow's coming in. I'm pinched in there. You know, we got lots of fresh air, so the defrost is working fine. But if I didn't have fuel, what am I going to do? You know, I'm dressed for skiing and everything, but I just prefer to just keep everything going so we got the vehicle running. What? We're talking about a half tank of gas. What does this have to do with that? Well, sometimes crap happens and you have to be able to have your engine running to even survive. This storm was super cold, tons of snow, super deep. <laughs> we couldn't go anywhere. We got buried. You know what we wound up doing is we built a snowman at the accident scene waiting for the sheriffs to come until we found out they weren't going to come. So that snowman was at the bottom of the canyon because that's where this happened, this narrow pass where the, the air goes through a narrow opening, gets really cold, just like a expansion valve on a uh, air conditioning system. You know, just freeze it. I know that. They didn't know that to bargain, T-Bone. We talked about it. So basically, we built a snowman. We go up there, find out that the road's blocked off at the top, so we try to turn around come back down. Maybe they'll yank that other bus. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, coming back down, we get to that snowman. Other people got stuck in the canyon too. And so with them getting stuck, they added to the snowman. I mean, it had hair, it had facial features. Somebody donated some ski clothing to it. Snowman looked awesome. Now, as far as Zell goes, he's just a fun dude. You know, like we don't get to hang out anymore because he's got all these girls and kids and, you know, I don't see each other. But he's seriously. When stuff goes bad, when he's dealt lemons, he makes lemonade. That's just what he does. Um, so what do we do? We get back down to the other snowman. There's no more snowman stuff to do. There's people already decked it out. I mean, the snowman looks fantastic. So what do we do? We get out of the car, and there's these other girls that are in the opposite lane, and there's some room in between. We turn up the stereo because the doors are going to be open on the Jeep anyway because it's all smashed on that side. And uh, we do a little swing dance, and we do a little country western swing dance, and I took some classes in college. They thought we were amazing, we thought it was a lot of fun, and we just had a really good time. So, that's why you have a good half a tank of gas, because that way you don't worry about your battery going dead when you're country dancing. You keep your heater going so that your vehicle doesn't become a little ice cube. And uh, you never know how long that's going to take, so you want to have that window of preparedness. That's a really long story to explain all of that, but uh, I think it well illustrates the point that I'm making here. So, half tank of gas or better. It's good for your fuel pump, it's good for your fuel filter so you don't block it off and wind up being stranded somewhere and it's 20 below and black. <laughs> you know, it's nighttime more than it's daytime and it's just cold. I mean, just bitter, bitter cold sometimes. You don't want to be caught in a bad way. So, that's why we winterize our cars, what this is all about. So, you're welcome. You're welcome to the ladies we country dance with, too. They had a good time. It's 3.43 a.m. It's just heading in from Nebraska, towing the new trailer. And uh, if you look at my fuel gauge on the truck, you know where this is going, right? I just did a video on winterizing your car and having a half tank of gas. So my fuel gauge says quarter tank, but it is empty. And I'm stranded at... 3.43 in the morning. Current temperature outside is... I mean, this is just screaming ironic. It's 26 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's pretty well below freezing. And, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, hanging out in the truck. Out of gas at 4 in the morning. <laughs> so, fortunately, I take my own advice. I've got gloves, I've got clothes, I've got boots, I've got everything I need. I'm about 15 miles from home so I can walk if I need to, get another car and then bring a gas can up. But fortunately I've got friends, my wife. <laughs> I've rescued her a number of times so fortunately she doesn't feel too bad rescuing me this time. But uh, yeah, I've never let my tr truck get below half a tank of gas and I was like 15 miles from home. And uh, I passed a gas station like 30 miles ago and I was like, well, on this thing, it says I've got about 90 miles still to go. 
and uh, it, apparently it's wrong. So all of a sudden the alarm came off on the thing saying you no know, low fuel pressure, you know, like three or four PSI, and then it died. That's it. So, oh man. So anyway, I'm gonna put the boots on, get all situated, and uh, wait for my wife to bring me some fuel. <laughs> Sheesh. So there's the truck. There's the trailer. It's a long sucker. Had a had a big old diesel tanker double trailer almost hit me. <laughs> I had flashers going everything and still just like right right next to me. I mean I swear he was like asleep or drunk or something. I'm like dude how do people get down the road? But I mean it's four in the morning what do you expect but still scared the crap out of me because I saw him coming a long way off. I pushed on my brake pedal and that gave me a few inches. <laughs> He started to swerve when he was like 50 yards out when I pushed the brakes, preparing for impact. <laughs> Maybe it'd be better not to hit the brakes, but holy crap, scary. Thanks to my sweet wife rescuing me. I've got, I know it's the wrong color, that's all we had at short notice 4 a.m. Cleared all the gas out, put in diesel, and uh, we're getting all fueled up. really surprised how little room people are giving you know unless I have like all the lights going and I have a couple of cones set up the cones I think really help but uh, yeah that's uh so if you run a diesel out of gas there's certain things that you have to do one of those things is down here where the fuel uh, filter is there's a little lever that you have to flip up to bleed the air out. So we got to reach down in here. Let's see if I can show it to you good. There's a little lever on the side. So I'm going to make a little puddle of diesel fuel on the ground. I have to excuse the sin. But you just prime the pump first. Please don't be drunk, don't be drunk, don't be drunk. This helps get fuel up to the filter and gets all the air out of it. I might have a bad pump for having run it out of fuel. You can see there's a big puddle underneath. So anyway, that should be bled enough. We'll cap all this up. We'll leave that off. I want to hear that pump. This is so funny. I haven't posted the half tank video yet, so this will go on it. This is the only camera I have, this little flip camera on me tonight. Come on, baby. If it doesn't go, then I have to get a $175 tow. Come on. You don't want to crank it too long or else the cables and starter and everything get hot. Let it cool for five seconds. Oh, what a pain. I mean, it's good that I know that now. I mean, it was just staying at quarter tank forever, but I was going down a canyon road. So I figured it was because it was going downhill it was doing so well on gas. Oh, you hear that? Here it comes. Oh, that's music to my ears. <laughs> Welcome back, Vin. Good boy. So anyway, that's how you get all the air out of the system. Um, on a Duramax, it's a plastic screw on the passenger side. On the Ford, it's a yellow uh, knob that you turn sideways. It's like right in the middle of the engine, like on the 7.3.
Oh, that's nice. I don't want to leave my brand new $5,000 trailer that I spent all that work out on the side of the road to get stolen. That would just be too sad. So, anyway, I'm telling you, there's some real value to keeping a half tank of gas. I got to do a new lift pump because this one, the gas gauge is wrong. <laughs> I always keep it over a half tank and tonight of all nights I didn't do it and I was just kind of experimenting what a bonehead but uh, I should do it during the day good weather not at four in the morning lesson learned learn from my mistakes right I'm not perfect I'm a pretty smart guy but just because you know something doesn't mean you always do it you know a lot of the things that I've learned I've learned by trial and error so well I'm, I got to get home and get to bed it's what, like 5 in the morning now? Oh, I can't believe I did this. So when I say the alarm went off, I mean that little thing in the corner that says 16 PSI. That went down to 4, and then 0, and then back to 4, and that's it. That's all there was. So with the two gas cans, it says I've got half a tank with $40 of diesel. It's basically just 10 gallons. It's $4 a gallon, a little over 10. So anyway, gas gauges, they tricky suckers that don't always tell the truth it's like I'm gonna be doing a new fuel sending unit so I made it home safe and sound and uh, as for the fuel sending unit to be put in my truck I got it I bought a precision one today and uh, I was just gonna while I have this as a visual aid I was gonna go over a couple of things about it um, it's called a sending unit because it sends a signal via this float to let you know through the gauge how much gas is in it. So this would be like an empty tank. This would be a completely full tank. And what it works as is uh, there's a little resistor board, little coiled wires that are right down in there. I'll zoom you in there and show you. So, you see on that little circuit board? So as you move this, it goes back and forth along that uh, little circuit board, that little printed board where that circle is and those numbers. And if you look up really close, you can see it's just a little wire that goes back and forth, back and forth to make that dark line. So, either that's bad and something's rusted, you know, because if you never have your tank go all the way down, then that can corrode and then it just doesn't get any contact or something happens. Or just something's wrong with this to where it won't go all the way down. So, either way, it's out of here. Now, as for the bottom of it and the crud, remember the crud we were talking about that? It's a really fine mesh strainer kind of a thing here with plastic, and then there's a sock after that, you know, like not like a cotton sock, it's more of a plastic type sock. But basically, if you get down to just the very last bit of gas, I mean, if you're up to like half tank or something or full tank, you've got fresh gas coming in through here. Once you get down past halfway, now you're sucking in through just this, and that's about it. Um, so anyway, you can look through, you can see the other sock if you look in there. It's that little, you know, the top half in here. Cuts off about there. So anyway, if you have your tank more full, you're not sucking crud as much. And that's just great because that keeps your fuel filter from getting plugged up. Um, as far as being rescued, I had to get rescued by my dad. Uh, how many years ago was that? It was in 2000. Three, I think you know I had that f-150 and the fuel filter plugged off and it just shut right down that was 10 years ago was the last time I had to go get rescued I think and you know when I was young I used to have to get rescued all the time <laughs> anyway I'm an expert at getting stuck and unstuck and roadside diagnosis and all that stuff and a lot of it's from my own sweet experience as I add to as the years go by even currently <laughs> So, it's just better to be prepared. You never know what's going to happen. I had no idea about this, that that would happen. And I was, what I was trying to do, I was trying to get back down close to where the house was so I could fill the tank up all the way to the gas station, the same one that I left from with a full tank. And that way I'd have a precise measurement. And that's why the bonehead move of, you know, it just worked out that it was a little, you know, too close. But I was just hoping to fill up close to home so I'd know exactly how much uh the cost was to go get the trailer because i'm going to be doing a video on that and uh, a review on the trailer a very honest review by the way we're not going to be angry we're not going to be spiteful nothing like that but i'm not holding anything back and there's plenty that uh <laughs> that i could have censored that will not be censored so <laughs> <laughs> i think
thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the uh, comment section below. If you like the video, click like and always subscribe. Thanks for watching.